Coming up next, a TV show all about the French-English divide. We'll meet the creators of Parle-moi de ça, Ottawa. That's next. Learning a new language can be intimidating, and here in Ottawa, we know all about the language barrier. But the creators of a new comedy series say it's a rich vein for material. Parle-moi de ça, Ottawa, premiered last week. I caught up with the creators at Absolute Comedy on Preston Street. Hello, thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Oh, it's amazing to be here, Ottawa, probably one of the best towns in all of Canada. Wow, you really bring the energy to this interview, I can tell already. Okay, um, I want to just start by asking you guys uh, how Parle-moi de ça came about. Uh, Five wanted me to do like a stand-up special and then they were like, what if there was more? And then uh, we wrote more and then we met this guy, Christopher Redmond, and he was <laughs> like, uh, let's, let's do more. And he didn't say no to any of our crazy ideas, <laughs> yes. which was really great. And I love the, the whole concept of what Mike was presenting. You know, it's the idea of a, an Anglophone who's trying to survive in sort of Francophone culture, um, really making an effort to speak French, even though he's stumbling through it. That's something I'm very familiar with being from, you know, a West of Saskatchewan. And Fishboy really encapsulated that sort of in one character, this, you know, very literal fish out of water uh, concept that I think uh, was on the nose, but very fun and it works and, and people get talk, it. And he talks like this, so it's kind of like he's always underwater. You know, so it's like kind of like an allegory for what it's like when you try to enter French culture. So it's like not easy. It's like being an, a literal fish out of water. I used to do a lot of cabarets in Montreal and I would just do Fishboy. And then uh, once I started getting into some television stuff, they were like, uh, I was like, oh, what if I did Fishboy on television? They were like, no. We meet Christopher Redmond, he's like, what else you got? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, that was an easy sell. So Fishboy it was. Fishboy it was. And um, Christopher, this isn't your first uh, production here in Ottawa, obviously. Um, a city that people think is boring and not funny. How, how do you tap into the funny parts of the city? I think that's what makes it extra funny. Okay. Um, I mean, in fact, I mean, the last series I did, Stitzel on Patrol, is all about leaning into that kind of humorlessness, right? It's about this character who's a, you know, bylaw, a wannabe bylaw enforcement officer, kind of a neighborhood watch guy. And I think the reason people are really connected with it was because, you know, uh, he just kind of represents that authority figure that we like to kind of make fun of and stuff, and also that kind of button-up proper suburb um, feeling that a lot of people have exists in Ottawa. But and I think so, doing a show like this as well was really about like letting loose. Oh, c'est moi Mike Patterson! <laughs> the anglophone humorist can borrow the français comme un Lazar, pew pew! I want to talk a little bit about who you're targeting oh here. Like, are you targeting anglophones? Are you ta targeting francophones? Well, I'm, I'm targeting my friend Frank Barfus's 14 year old son, Frank Barfus Jr. Um, so literally when, when I met Chris, he's like, I've done this thing called Stittsville on Patrol. So I called Frank Barfus, who lives in Stittsville. I don't know if I should out his name. Um, but what's yeah. His, what's his actual address? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he lives on. But he lives in Stittsville, and he's like, Frankie, do you watch Stittsville on Patrol? Like, That's the best show. And then he's like, Uncle Mike, you have no idea. It's so good. You got to do this. And so like, they're all really excited about this show. So my target demographic is one house in Stittsville. <laughs> If you want to know what I was what I was going for, but I'm also you a want? crazy person. Um, anyone who can understand Mike's French is really the target audience. <laughs> so people who speak French well, people who speak French not well, <laughs> um, people who are Anglophone and speak French. I mean, all of those people can understand probably your French. So. What, what do you think is so funny about that concept? Is you know of just trying to understand somebody speak French in a way that isn't um, parfait. I guess. <laughs> well, I think that a lot of Anglophones are, are intimidated to speak French. And I think part of what makes Mike really um, successful in French is that he's just going for it. He doesn't always have the right words. And, and Francophones actually appreciate that because uh, I think it's too easy to just assume that English is a default language. But, you know, I always say we all have the, when I speak French, I actually have like an entirely different personality, right? I can't always be as sarcastic or I can't be as whatever, like there's, there's shades I can't do. So you end up being a little more overt sometimes and it, it changes who you are. Um, 
but the more you practice it, the more you can kind of become more of who you are in, in your first language. But I think that process of getting there is actually really fun, and there's a lot of comedy to be mined along the way. I, I've directed French television shows as well for TFO, for, for kids shows, and it's got to be spot on. Everything has to be spot on. I think what this was was a license to, to be a little looser, have a little more fun, and uh, so far people are really responding to it. That's great. Congratulations, and thank you so much. Thank you, and uh, wonderful. <laughs>